right, well, I'm getting ready to spray, and so I thought I'd just show you what I did. Basically, just masked off everything that I didn't want to get uh, primer on. You see there, I've also plugged the, the cable holes. C2 post um, shim. And so uh, we are good to go. Um, I've got this hanging from the ceiling so that it's easier for me to um, get around. I'm going to be using some, some Duratec. This is uh, Duratec Easy Sand Primer. Now one uh, important note is if you're spraying this to epoxy, you need to sand the epoxy down to like 100 grit. And I've already done that on the frame. So it's pretty warm today. I'll be uh, catalyzing this at probably 1.5 um, instead of the 2% recommended. I'm also going to be using some um, MEK to, to, to reduce it a little bit. Um, I'll probably be mixing that probably about 5%. So I just got to get this mixed up. Spray gun is all set up, ready to go. I think I'm going to be shooting at about 45 pounds. Um, not sure what the pot pressure is, but I'll adjust that um, to get a, a coat that I like. All right, so we got this thing sprayed with the Duratec Easy Sanding Primer. And I uh, just wanted to show you a couple things. Um, the nice thing about this primer is like, if you have a pinhole like this one, um, this is a pretty big pinhole, uh, the uh, primer will go into that hole and kind of fill it in. But I'll still need to take some like pro glazing putty or something and fill the re that hole in the rest of the way. And then I will take some 220 sandpaper, knock all the big stuff down. Um, I don't know if you can see it real good, but uh, when you spray this stuff, uh, a lot of times it comes out with, a, with an orange peel. Um, it's just because it's so thick. Um, it sounds really easy, so it's not really a big concern if you get that. Um, just another note too, uh, I'm going to be sanding this on some sawhorses, so I just took some breather cloth and put it on here so that the, uh, the frame doesn't get scratched while I'm sanding. So um, just a recap, you hit it with some uh, 220 to level it, and then I'll switch over to 320 and then we will paint. All right, I wanted to show you this, this is just a 3M uh, rubber sanding block and it used to have uh, 3M numbers sticking out. I cut those off and, and I used this quite a bit as a rounded uh, sanding area. So I've got both sides with uh, some 220 grit sandpaper. This is uh, uh, 3M's free cut. really like this stuff. Um, it doesn't gum up too bad and so um, if it does I use a uh, air hose. I just keep the air hose with it up here like this and I'll sand it down see how easy this is to sand so if I get stuff like this on here I can just blow it off with the air hose see how nice that is and so I'll do that quite a bit while I'm sanding down this uh, this frame here and I'll just blow that off and um, I find that uh, that I can use sandpaper for a long time using the air hose to clean it off every once in a while so just a little trick I thought I'd show you Okay, just a quick update. Um, went ahead and got this filled with the glazing putty. Um, I just slather it on there. Make sure I get the uh, pinhole uh, filled in first and then slather a little bit on top of that. So, you can see there's quite a few uh, pinholes on this. I'm actually surprised there were so many, but uh, those should be taken care of. Most of this will get sanded off. All you see is a little circle where the pinhole was. Okay, this has been primed and sanded with uh, 220 to knock all the high stuff down. And then I gave it a rough or, or quick um, sand with some, um, with just a 320 uh, sanding foam block. Um, and that was just to get rid of some of the 220 scratches. Now you can see here, uh, I've got some black showing through. Um, when you start to see carbon come through, stop sanding or lighten up on that area so that you don't cut into the carbon too much. Otherwise, you'll start to get more pinholes. Um, now, uh, in preparation for paint, um, if you painted it like this, the black and the gray would contrast in the sun through your base coat. So I'm just gonna take some cheap primer and prime this. Normally, I'd use a little more expensive primer, but since this is a prototype, I don't wanna spend the money on it. So I'm just gonna use this $6 can of Dupli Color. Um, once I get that sprayed and dried, I will hit it again with uh, 320. Um, 320 is about the highest grit sandpaper you want to go, or the lowest grit sandpaper, I guess, um, for uh, painting. 
uh, the uh, the paint shop where I bought the the paint says to to hit it with 320 minimum uh, 400 um, usually works the best so I'm just gonna do 320 on this I right, just got done priming this and um, kind of wanted to show you I don't know if you can see this real good or not but uh, uh, this really brings out all the little mistakes or the the lines that you cut um, you know when I'm using a sanding block it's hard to get those curves just right I mean, you know you try to go on 45 and you go back and forth and sometimes you get you end up with these little lines so spraying this with primer uh, really brings those lines out those mistakes out um, also it shows you little pinholes like a little pinhole over here um, things that you missed so now you have a couple of different options one is uh, go back and you know fill and 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 sand it down and smooth all that stuff out and if this was a uh, production bike uh, that's what I would do but since this is just a prototype I'll probably just knock this down with some some 320 again um, without going too far into it and then um, call it good so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna hit this with some 320 call it good and um, you know we'll spend a little more time on the next frames the uh, the next frame shouldn't be quite so sanding intensive just because um, we've got all the kinks worked out on this one so the uh, the process of building the frame is going to be a lot easier and a lot more efficient so um, anyway there you have it uh, uh, just getting ready to, uh, to sand this down after it uh, dries for a little bit and then we'll shoot some base on it and um, the base that I bought comes with the, the clear in it already so um, We'll just give it a few coats and call it good. Okay, so we're getting ready to paint. Um, so let me show you uh, my setup here. I've got, um, this is a, uh, an LVLP sprayer or a low volume, low pressure sprayer. This is a HVLP or a high volume, low pressure sprayer. Um, this one here I use a lot for my gel coats and my Duratec primer just because they're, they're pretty thick and they have a pretty uh, low viscosity so um, I use this one a lot for that uh, when I try to spray regular um, paint with this sprayer I get a lot of splattering so I don't really like to use it and I like this one a lot um, this one's just uh, one from Amazon it's a it's a vapor um, which is made by Titan I believe so um, another thing to note is I've got inline filters this filters out the moisture in your line um, if you're using a setup like I've got, I don't have a really professional setup. I've just got this little five gallon compressor and I do get moisture in the lines. And so I make sure that I put a filter on before it enters the gun. Um, I've also got a pressure gauge that shows the inline pressure for the pressure gauge. Now over here, I've got my paint. This is a, uh, this is just some PPG paint. Um, uh, the supplier I get I really like because they're they're real eager to help out uh, the uh, the beginner um, or the amateur uh, painter or the novice you know if you have questions there um, so anyway I like to get my paint from them but the particular setup I've got today um, you know they set me up with the correct reducer and um, you know it's kind of nice I go in and and they tell me that this normally takes you know four parts of uh, the base to one point or one part reducer and and one part activator but they you know they says most of the most of the paint guys like don't like to use the reducer in it because it gets a little too runny so they give you little hints and, and tips like that um, also they'll give you the right um, activator for the temperature outside um, another nice thing was is they they told me to set my gun up today to to 29 pounds of inline pressure and um, and then to a to adjust my uh, my spray to how I want it um, you know just having uh, somebody help you out like that is, is real beneficial um, so if you got a good paint uh, supplier in the area check them out before just uh, buying um, you know online or whatever because they'll be able to to tell you how to correctly set up your guns and that and they might even be able to show you how to paint uh, um, you know, if you got somebody in the area that knows how to paint, have them help you too. Otherwise, you can really botch it up. So anyway, that's all I've got. Um, 
I'm gonna go ahead and get suited up. Um, again, I wear total coveralls, I wear goggles, I wear a respirator to spray, and then I, um, you know, I don't have a, uh, an exhaust fan in my, in my booth here. So it's one of the things I wanna put in, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So anyway, if you got all that stuff, good luck. If not, then um, you know, just do what you can. All right, well, um, I said I was going to show you this in the sun, and so here you have it. Uh, it turned out pretty good. Um, it looks better in the sun than it does under uh, artificial lighting. So, um, happy with it. The orange pill doesn't look too bad today, so that's good. It looks nice and shiny. Um, I got all the tape off of it. See the cups there. Bottom bracket. So, now it's just time to run the, the cables and put everything together.